Hey, what's up, good people? How you doing? Welcome back to Stock Up with Larry Jones. Do yourself a favor and come join the family by following that prompter in your right-hand corner, lower right-hand, where it says like, subscribe, and notification bell, only if you're new. Okay, we got a lot to talk about today. Let's start out with NVIDIA, okay? NVIDIA is the lead chip manufacturers, especially as it refers, as it relates to CPUs, right? And NVIDIA was taking a dip, but the CEO came out yesterday and he spoke. And when he spoke, the market listened. So a lot of people were asking Larry, hey, why don't, you know, should I just sell my, all of my NVIDIA? And uh, I've been consistently saying, no, I'm holding my NVIDIA. I did a little haircut uh, about a month ago now uh, just based on some of the stuff that I bought at the top because I DC every, every day. But the stuff that I had, I held because I have consistently been saying, listen, we're, we're just in a fourth, we're in a first quarter with this AI boom, all right? Take a listen to this, good people. The surge coming after CEO Jensen Huang touted the extraordinary demand for AI chips at the Goldman Sachs Communicopia and Technology Conference on Wednesday. Demand is so great that that delivery of our components and our technology and our infrastructure and software is really emotional for people mm -hmm. because it directly affects their revenues. It directly affects their competitiveness. Huang uh, pointing to the intensity of the demand being so great that their customers get emotional when the supply can't always meet what they want here. And that demand has certainly benefited NVIDIA to this point. And some of the entrenchment that they've been able to put forward for themselves has really come back to uh, CUDA, which we've talked at length. So when he said customers are a bit emotional, who are these customers? These are these big multi-billion dollar and even trillion dollar companies that are their customers. They're not talking about you and I. Yes, they're emotional because they want to be first in this AI race. There's not, there's, that's not just it. I want you to listen even further. It comes to the fact that customers are a bit more emotional because they, everyone wants to be first when it comes to this technology. But the fact that he did once again reiterate that quote unquote incredible demand for chips also went on to talk about the fact that every dollar a company spends on NVIDIA infrastructure could be turned into $5 in cloud computing revenue. And I think that almost validates some of the concerns that had been or validates the initial euphoria that we did see play out within the AI trade and almost puts to ease some of those concerns that we did have over the last several weeks. So like I've been stating, there's a lot of runway for NVIDIA. The demand is greater than the output and I'm long on NVIDIA. And not just that, they also go into talking about companies like AMD uh, that will actually start to take up some of the workload because NVIDIA has a moat built around it, but if, essentially they can't handle the workload. All right, good people, but this is also what happened today. With Jensen Wong just moments ago, Megan. Hey, Scott, that's exactly right. So we've been here just outside the White House all morning because there was a meeting this morning between the Biden administration and top tech leaders on AI. We saw Sam Altman of OpenAI. We expected Ruth Porat of Google, Dario Amade of Anthropic, Brad Smith of Microsoft were all here. And then we, we caught up with Jensen Huang of NVIDIA, as you mentioned. We got to talk with him for a few minutes about the 2024 election, about that meeting, about AI and his thoughts on all of it. We have the tape here for you. Let's about the meeting today? Well, we're talking about uh, energy, uh, about this new industry called AI factories and artificial intelligence. And obviously, uh, we're at the beginning of a new industrial revolution. And uh, this industry is going to be producing intelligence. And what it takes is, is uh, energy and, of course, a lot of great computer science and, and uh, uh, large computing systems that NVIDIA makes. And so, so we've got we've got to make sure that that uh, everybody understands uh, the needs coming, the opportunities of it, the challenges of it, and um, and do it in, in the uh, the most effic efficient and uh, scalable way we can. Now they go on to talk about the amount of energy that it's going to take, and there may be uh, room for a private or public investment uh, through the government, and of course the governments uh, world world around are going to try to be first in this AI race. Now, um, this is not if you're a fan of hers or not, 
but Oprah will be doing a special on AI tonight. And um, I know with all of the conspiracy stuff, but we are just going to listen because there are trillions of dollars to be made off of AI over the next five to 10 years. And um, I plan on partaking of some of that money. And so do you, because I'm going to be continually talking about it. So remember, everything is news driven right now. PPI came out this morning and uh, the market absolutely turned around uh, like it has been. Uh, we just had, we're going to be having these roller coaster days. Look at this. Look at the roller coaster. It went up, come down, back up. And NVIDIA right now, good people, is up. NVIDIA is up 2% today. Let me make that bigger for you guys. But look at what happened the last month. Up about 11%, right? Up about, all right? But the last month, look at that. So we had the run up and then some people freaked out, sold here at the top and gave up your gains and gave up 20%. And this is why panic selling is never a good deed. Okay. Now, Larry, you said that it could um, uh, come down. Yes. Tom Lee spoke and he said, you know, it's going to be rocky. And for the next six weeks, he said that five weeks, he said that a week ago, so for the next five weeks, and I agree with him, that it's not going to be a straight line up. That's not a straight line, good people. You see that? It's not a straight line. Some would say that's a false start. No, it wasn't a false start. We had a good earnings report from NVIDIA and it fell. And the CEO, which I think is brilliant, came out and just moved his mouth, did some jaw boning, and uh, that's what they call it. And it went back up, right? And because... People that panic realize, wait a minute, all I have to do is just hold. You you heard me play the video of the woman that invested $10,000, and I believe it was 2011, and turned it into $3 million with this one stock, okay? Now, it, is that going to repeat? I don't know, and, and that's not what we're looking for. We're just looking to make some money. So, I believe that there's still room this month is still September. Remember September into October is the worst, one of the worst periods. So my question is, what are you going to do? Did you panic sell? Uh, leave me a comment if you did, let's be honest, cause we're here to help the family. Or did you just hold right now? I didn't do any more aggressive buying because I do believe that the entire market has room I, I don't have a crystal ball, but it has room to cool off between now and November. And that's what Tom Lee talked about. And I agree. So here it is, good people. Here it is. Special announcement. Guess who's joining me on Music and Money? My guy, Josh. Here it is. This link will, in this video, be the top link. We want everyone to come. We've made it extremely affordable for everyone. All of the details is right here. When, where, uh, the policies, the tickets, everything, frequently asked questions. Everything is in the link. Please, I want everyone. This is my first production. We're going to see how this goes. I've made it extremely affordable for everyone. Now, this will not be the ticket price for next year, I promise you, uh, because we have a lot of expense that I am taking on myself. I just want you there and not just you, your mates, your kids, your neighbors, them, Billy Bob, them, uh, Jethro, them, uh, Tyrone, Day Day, all of them. I want you guys to come. We're going to pour into you. And we have some top musicians. For those of you music musicians that's out there, we got Maurice Fitzgerald, uh, bassist extraordinaire, did a Destiny's Child tour, played for the, some of the biggest acts on the planet. And guess who's going to be playing with him? Calvin Rogers, drummer extraordinaire. We got Joey Wolfolk, the one of the top guitarists in the country. We, we're just going to just pour into you guys, okay? This is going to be the top link below. Listen, you guys know how this go. At the end, everyone always asks, 
Is there any more tickets left? And you just wait. Look, we're going to pour into you guys. Myself and Stocks with Josh are just going to pour into you guys and give you guys everything. All right. All right. So make sure you check the link below. So good people, I have to address yesterday's video that I had to edit out because some people got their feelings hurt. And um, I... <laughs> It is, I don't, I, I can't for the life of me understand why some people um, are so emotional when it comes to trading. Um, I, I just said that one side had won the debate, right? That's it. Everybody has a bad day. I didn't say they, they won the race. I said just the debate, right? We have a lot of time for the debate. I'm a true independent. I don't care who you vote for. I care for you. At the end of the day, we got a millionaire and a billionaire. And, you know, uh, uh, four to eight years from now, none of them will be around. It'll be you and I. I care about you making money. That's what I care about. All right. And so I'm just going to share with you the facts. You know, somebody was like, yeah, but the moderator, I wasn't talking about that. That was just one person. I wasn't talking about the moderator. I wasn't talking about. I was just showing you how it affects our stocks. Let's go right into it again. Good people. There we go. Here it is. Historically. The actually the best performance for the stock market, okay, for the market, not the election, for the stock market. Now, you vote your choice. I'm not here to tell you who to vote for, right? All right? And I'm not swayed either way. All I'm saying is I want you to know what's going to happen financially, and then you vote according to how you're going to vote. But... This year, do you know that there has been more money donated to both the parties in the last few months through crypto than actual cash? Now, tell me that doesn't sway. It does. All right. So here's what's happening. The best performance for your and I invested money is when there is a what? Divided Congress. There it is. Best performance. Average three months. The absolute best performance. Average three month returns related to all periods. Look at this. Look at this. It's the highest. It's the highest by 3.9 and boom, right? Slightly less when one uh, has both. Slightly less when the other has both. But even here, when you got red and red, Look at that. Okay. But here's the biggest gain right here when it's, and it doesn't matter what color this is, long as that's divided. Okay. And so the market has performed well under both. That's what I wanted to show you guys, good people. And look at this. All I was trying to do is protect your money. This company is not an investment. Right. I was keep telling you guys, it's not an investment. Right. He doesn't even run the company. Good people. And it was a SPAC. Ninety three percent of all SPACs do horribly. He's not. Get your emotions out. I just want to show you this. OK. All right. Now, I don't know. I'm not going to get into that. I want to show you this based on what the stock, not the politics, the stock. But the politics did have something to do with it. This was election day. I mean, this was the uh, debate, right? Look at what happened. Bam. That's what happened. You lost money if you enter this emotionally. This is a meme stock, okay? I always want to bring you guys um, uh, information. When you look and see the PE and you don't see anything, that's red flag number one. Let's go to the financials, okay? Look at that. Net income. What is it doing, good people? Look, look at it. Falling, falling. Revenue. There was a little here, down, down, nothing. Okay? Look at this, right? I'm trying to tell you guys. What is green? What? Operating expense. Okay? All right? Net profit margin. Boom. Uh, EBITDA, for those of you who don't know what that is, boom. That's what I'm telling you guys. Now. Here's another thing, because I'm concerned about your money. Look at this. 
when can you know who I'm not trying to say his name because they definitely scrolls my video from yesterday. When can he sell his stock? I want you guys to be prepared. When can he sell his stock? Ah, uh, means the deposit date can sell September 19th. Okay. September 19th. You see here, that means that the earliest possible date that you know who can sell is September 19th. I'm not saying his name because when I, I said it on yesterday and yesterday's video performed like crap and a, a silent voice can't be heard. I want you to hear me. I'm, I'm not, I'm not concerned about those two. God is in control, but I'm concerned about you and your money. So I'm telling you right now, September 19th, right? So if you want to, like I did on yesterday, I did some puts and made some money, right? That's all this is. He's not running this company. This is a company that just has his name. And he, at one point, stand, stood to take $4 billion away from the deal. Now, what do you think is going to happen when they have a lockout period? It's a SPAC. When, there's a, when you are into a SPAC, special purpose acquisition company, there is a lockout period where he can't take any money out. Okay. He can't sell his shares, but on the date that I showed you at the earliest, he can sell his shares, right? What would you do if you saw a company that was performing this bad? Okay. What would you do? Right? You'd probably take your money out. Let's look at the five day. Let's look at the one month. Let's look at the six month. You see what I'm saying? Good people. So that's what I wanted to tell you. Okay. And uh, let's just take a listen to crypto. Um, and then going back to the election for just a sec, and this is not even a question about yeah. the election, but Bernstein had a note out yesterday kind of highlighting what a stark difference it would be um, if one candidate were to win versus the other. They were saying if Trump yeah. wins, Bitcoin could go to 80K by the end of the year. Yeah. And if Harris wins, it could fall to 40K by the end of the year. Um, and this is not so much about the election, but it, it seems like the more bullish calls for Bitcoin are kind of getting lower and staying below <laughs> 100K. So people said what report report that was the report that I was talking about yesterday remember this is about our money and uh so look as soon as you google it good people I come bringing gifts all right look at this bitcoin could top just like she said right there I'm not gonna say it right but then look at this right look at that 30 to 40 right now there is some truth in to end that now those exact numbers no one knows this is just hypothetical uh, and all by getting, get an understanding again, billionaire, millionaire, and we fight these battles for these billionaires and millionaires. When the reality is I'm just talking about financially, they're going to be okay. I'm here for you. And that's why I brought that up yesterday, but let's not, uh, get sidetracked on why I talk about politics because you clearly you could see it is deeply embedded in the stock market and crypto. More money was given in the past few months in crypto than it has been in actual fiat currency. And you best believe that that's going to weigh heavy. Now, the uh, blue party is starting to soften up now on crypto. And that's why I am the way I am on crypto. BCH, okay, Bitcoin Cash. I want you guys to look at that, look at the 30 day, put that on your, it's been performing well, I have some. BCH, BCH, Bitcoin Cash, right? And I know this one is a long one, but it is power packed full of information that's going to help you make money. I have to play this also too. Maybe a post election rally, am I right? Absolutely. So typically the, uh, the uh, seasonality gets shifted during the election year. Instead of August and September being weak, it's September and October. And you look at a majority of styles, sizes, sectors, and sub-industries in negative territory in September and October. But then the reverse is true in November and December. Once the uncertainty of the election has been lifted, you find that all sizes, styles, sectors, and 97% of the
sub-industries are in positive territory uh, led by more of the growthy areas. So there you have it, good people. September, October will be a buying opportunity, right? Where is the bottom exactly going to be? I don't know. But I just came and did a ton of research to find people that align with what I'm trying to say. And I just give it all to you, right? And you make a decision, right? So I'm not mentioning the, the politics anymore because I am just here to try to help you. I don't care if you are blue or red. What I do care about is you making money and you protecting your gains. Now, as far as the political, morally, and all of that, vote your conscience. But when I come to you guys, it's just to help you make money. All right, good people. And uh, I'm never going to apologize for that. All right. So get your feelings out of the way. The one that just, just had a total meltdown thinking... I just because one had a bad day. All right. It's, it's just a bad day. This is not the whole race. OK. All right. And even you, I want you to make money at the end of this. All right. So, hey, good people, I'm going to be pouring into you guys, myself and stocks with Josh, October 12th. This will be the top link. Make sure that you be there. Be there. All right. And then we're going to do what we do. All right, good people. It's going to be great information. And we're preparing. I'm preparing something special for beginners and for you guys that are following. And Josh is too. All right. And there's going to be, there'll probably be more added to this. We don't know. But right now you have enough. Let's go. We'll see you. Let me know if this has helped you guys. Of course, you guys know about Stock Up View. Let me know by leaving me a coffee cup. If anything I said has helped you, okay? And I want you to put in the comments, P-O-P, P-O-P, people over politics, because that's what we need to get back to and not all of this stuff. This too shall pass, but I'm putting people over politics. I love you guys. Live, love, laugh, and learn.